There it goes. Okay, and here comes Jelly. That's good. Let's see, what do I want to do first? Let me look through this and then we'll start. Um, okay. Hi, welcome to the Knitting and Tangents podcast. My name is Sarah and I'm glad you can be here today. I haven't been here for quite a long, long time. I, right about when it was time to record the next podcast, which is going to turn out to be this one, um, I got sick, so I didn't. And I didn't do anything for a couple weeks because I felt miserable. It wasn't, it was just exhausted, kind of miserable. Um, and then I got busy. So now I'm here, I've got everything sorted out. And we can get back to everything again. Um, the other thing, the busyness part that I had was knitting camp. Here's our little badge that somebody made us. Move my head a little bit more, maybe that'll focus. We'll hope. Um, we have, my knitting group has a knitting camp and some people come from far away some people come from just down the street. So it's fun. We meet at someone's house. We go on outings to do shopping, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and we do goodie bags where we each bring a little something and we put in a bag. Someone makes or buys bags for us and um, that's their contribution. And then we all make other things or get buy other things to put in there. And so everybody ends up with this good bag of stuff. Swag, we'll call it swag. Yes. So the first thing we'll start with is shopping. That really sort of started first. Oh, excuse me. I didn't know I was going to yawn. Anyway, the first day of Nitty Camp, we went to Schaefer Yarn. Um, I knew her name a minute ago. Oh well. Um, she lives in Interlochen, New York. It's between Cayuga and Seneca Lakes. And so it was an adventure. We went all, it's all out in the middle of nowhere. Well, seeming to us in the middle of nowhere. Um, and we, we bought yarn. Some bought a lot, some bought a little. I think there might have been one or two people that didn't buy anything. Which, you know, was uh, highly unusual, but no, and then it happens. I think that might have been from the group that went to Ithaca first, which is a town at the south end of one of those two lakes. I don't know which. Cayuga, maybe? I don't know. My geography for that is not very good. Um, and they went shopping there, too, so they may have been a little shopped out by the time they headed up. So anyway, I went. I got this. I don't know if it's gonna, there's going to be enough light or the focus or any of that, we'll hold it there for a minute and see. Um, the colors are black and a navy blue and a royal blue and a purple and the turquoise. And the light, you might show up as light blue because it does sometimes, but it's a turquoise. It's a more green than, than blue, greeny blue. Um, and this is Schaefer Yarns Anne. And here's the tag. 60, 25, 15. It's 60% superwash merino, 25% mohair, and 15% nylon. And this is a, and it's 560 yards, which is really nice. Um, actually, I shouldn't have done this until the end. Oh well. We'll go back to it. Just remember this. So that's what I got. I only got the one and other people got more. Some people got three or four. Some people didn't. She doesn't sell to stores anymore. She doesn't sell wholesale anymore. But her, she has a little shop in her yard and um, there goes Jilly, that wiggle. Um, and she sells to the public at wholesale prices, so it's it's a it's a very good good deal when you can get it from her. Which I think you have to go there. I don't think she does it by mail. Um, 
But there's that. And then the next day, yes, the next day we went up to Rochester to several yarn stores. And one of them had hedgehog fibers, which I've sort of become obsessed with lately. I don't feel that I have to buy all of it, but I just really like seeing it and um, need to look for others. I'm going to be yawning the whole time, I'm afraid. Um, anyway, so I got this skein of hedgehog sock yarn, which is superwash merino wool and nylon. You might say on the front there. I might see on the back. Let's see, 90% wool and 10% nylon. It's 350 meters, so not quite 400 yards. And it's just lovely. They, they just do a great, great job with their colors. And these, I just like them a lot. So anyway, those are my two purchases. That's all I got for yarn. Um, the other thing was goodie bags. We all contributed to the goodie bags. This doesn't belong in here. That's for later. Um, did I, said, have I said this already? Oh, no, I don't know if I thought it or I said it. Anyway, someone buys or makes a bag this year that bags were bought. And, um, we eat, they're all different, so we each put a name tag on them so we know whose is whose. And who's got, you know, who's feeling they get first first dibs on that. So let's see, what did we get? We got a little box of chocolates. There are chocolates in here. There's two truffles and one salted caramel. And my friend Sue, who I rode with most of the time, brought these. Her, I won't get to them too far. Her sister has a sweet shop. So she got them there, and her sister actually made the salted caramels. So that's good. I'm saving, actually what I'm saving them for is some quiet time. So I can enjoy them and not have to give anybody else any, because there's only three, and they're mine. So there's that. Someone brought, gave us um, plain silk chiffon scarves. These were for, to use on dyeing day, and I'll talk about dyeing day in a few minutes. Um, I obviously didn't do that, and I'll get to that again more later. What I gave was an assortment of stitch markers. On the top is a row counter, one of those ring ones that you move down, and some progress keepers that... There's a big one with a flower on it. I thought that could be a good zipper pull. Um, and then here's some little ones. There's a, a little moon and fairy. And a little white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. There's those. And then the, the row counter. I found a little camp sign charm, so it's camp for knitting camp. It's very small, you probably can't read it. And then just a flower to mark the, the rows as you go. Um, I got some of these hoops and just put a little bead on each one. I love these, they're wonderful. And then just some big rings for knitting, they don't come apart. So that's what I put in. We got two kinds of lotion. They're both lovely. This one is called Grandma's Secret Miracle Moisturizer. And it works really well. It just soaks right in. It doesn't leave any greasiness. And it's got a little lanolin in it, so I don't know if that helps, but it makes me think it's good. Um, it has no fragrance, which is nice, too. I'm going to put this in my purse because my husband hates it when I have, when I put on hand lotion in the car. And it smells. He hates the smells. So this one is more of a handmade lavender um, scented lotion from, is it Lavender Moon? Is that the, yeah, Lavender Moon Herb Gardens is the name of the, the what the person calls her business. And it's local. And it 
it's all it's really nice too. It's a little greasier than the other, but it's good when you're wanting when you know you're done with things and you're wanting to just sort of maybe grease it up for a while, grease up your hands. We got a little eye eye <coughs> excuse me, an eye pillow. Like this. And it's filled with rice. It's got a flannel or fleecy coating and then a little handle so if you put it you can put it in the microwave to warm it and this way you don't burn yourself or you can put it in the freezer if you want cold and then you can get cold and you can just use it the first night um, I used it I was feel like a little wound up and I just put on my eyes and went to sleep and it was really nice except I didn't move all night I guess to keep it on my eyes and I don't know. I get a little stiff if I don't move all night. It was good. I slept really well. Let's see. Someone gave us a key ring. I think that the key ring and the button were from the same person. And the key rings all had little sheep on them. Here. And mine says bad hair day. Bad hair day. Yes, it's funny. It's cute. It's the whimsical world of Thomas Joseph. And that's where they came from. If you're interested. What else do we get? Someone gave us scissors. Lovely, nice size scissors. Not, not especially little, um, not like little snippy scissors, but sort of good medium sized scissors. And in a case, which is nice, because scissors don't have them poke into things frequently. Let's see, one of the women, well actually quite a few of the women in the group were weavers. Um, one made us, here let me pull this up a little bit so you can see more of the pattern. One made us hand, and she wove these little bookmarks for us which I thought was very nice here. I'll put my finger there. You can see it. Her name is Mary McMahon, and she has a weaving studio in Geneseo, which is a college town near here. And they closed their art department, which is kind of sad, but that's what that is. Let's see, we got um, Handmade Lip Balm from Firefly Farms. It's my friend Pat. She lives up the hill from me. And mine, I got raspberry. I was sort of the go-between. I picked up the lip balm and took it over and then got the money and brought it back. So I got, I decided I was going to choose what I wanted. Um, and then the other thing is someone gave us a scale. And these are really cool little scales. Um, does this move good? It weighs in grams and ounces. This has, you can't, it's probably, it's not really visible. It has numbers etched into it. And what you do is you take the clip. You could do it, she got it so we could measure yarn. But you do the clip and then this goes down and this is saying it's 20 about 22 and a half grams so if that were yarn you could you could measure the amount of yarn you have and figure out how many grams and then weigh your yarn and see how many grams you have and multiply it by the number of yards that that do and divide and I could do that but I can't explain how to do that because it's getting all jumbled, but you know, you can figure out what yardage you have left if you need to. Um, so that's really nice. And it's little, and it doesn't need batteries, and you can just stick it in a bag and have it with you. And it's a good thing. So that's the goodie bag. And what else? Let's see, we had dinner couple times. The first night after we went out to Schaefer Yarn we had dinner. I'm going to put things back while I talk here now. Um, we had dinner at 
the woman's house, Patty's house, who was the hostess. She was the, the instigator. And that's pretty accurate. Um, and the hostess, she had people, we had, she invites a lot of her older friends and, and one is her cousin. And so we had people from around here, but we also had one woman from New Mexico and her cousin, Patty's cousin, came from Maine. Um, and those were nice. They, they just, it's just nice to see them. We met, I met them for the first time last year. The year before was the first knitting camp and a bunch of people went up to Maine to to Patty's cousin's house and then they have a cottage on a lake up there. I think I've said this before. I don't know. Um, and so that was fun and then they decided that it was fun and we should all do it forever. And so this is the second year we've done it here and Patty's had enough of being the hostess so for next year we're going to have to figure out something else. I don't know if it will be feasible to go to New Mexico, which was one one suggestion for this year. Um, I know Patty went to New Mexico right the week before camp, and then she and her friend went up to the Loopy U in Colorado, and there were classes. They met Stephanie Pro McPhee and some other people there. There was, it was, I don't know what was the event at Loopy U, but it was some event that they were having. And so that's a thought. We're thinking about it. And let's see. So I've already done my, what I bought, my shopping segment. And um, I think I'll just show, oh I don't have the March socks. I think I've already showed the March socks. They were purple. Um, that's really my only finished object. The other thing I have, and this is very sad because today is May 2nd. And these are my April socks. And they're still in progress. This is as far as I am. I just finished the gusset last night. And I gotta work on them because i got to get the May socks going soon. Anyway, this is the April sock. It's got a little cable that goes down the front on the side. And then I put a little bit of the cable motif right at the top of the heel flap, right at the ankle. So it sort of draws it in a little bit more around the ankle. So that <coughs> I thought was cute. Here, excuse me. Same old mug, same old plain chamomile tea with some stevia in it. That's it. Um, kind of cold now, but that's okay. So that's the one work in progress. The one that's coming up that I should be working on <coughs> is this. It's Knitting Fever International's yarn, cashmere, indulgence cashmere. It is 150 grams, 437 yards or 400 meters. It's 70% extra fine merino, 25% polyamide, polyamide, whatever, and 5% cashmere. And it's pretty colors, and I liked it a lot. And I was all looking forward to it, and then my husband said he wanted a pair of socks with cashmere in them, and I was going to do him a pair. The April socks were going to be for him because his birthday's in April, but then I had to do, oh, the April socks were the yarn I dyed at camp last year, and I didn't go into dyeing day, so I'll do that in a minute. Um, anyway, I had to knit up the April, sock, okay, April socks for knitting camp, so I'd have my yarn made up from last year, so I wouldn't have to sit around too much. So I put this aside 
and um, it's the only yarn I have with cashmere in it, so that's what he's getting. I, I guess he doesn't mind the colors, red and purple and pink, and I guess it's not really pink, it's purple and a bunch of greens and blues. It's not too bad. Um, he doesn't worry about stuff like that too much, so... Anyway, yes, dyeing day. This, there were no pictures, so we'll show you this from last year. This was my yarn that I dyed last year. And, because we did dyeing day, I just, we just take plain yarn and I take all my dyes to someone's house over there and we have table, lots of tables and Everybody spreads out their yarn and paints it or squirts it or... I don't think anybody was splattering it this year. I think last year there was some splattering because mine have a few little spots of red in them, but um, that's okay. So this year we did, and I usually set yarn, especially this way when it's, it's not cooked as it's being dyed. Usually I dye in pots, so it's, it's in heat and... Um, is fairly well set by the time it's finished. But these, since it's just painted on, I, I wrap in plastic and put in the microwave to set. And I know people, some people have trouble with the microwave. I've never had trouble with it. I make sure the yarn is pretty wet. Um, that way it doesn't burn. And the dyes set really well that way. They don't, there's very little bleeding afterwards. Um, so anyway, the first person got finished and I put it in the microwave. She did a, a scarf, one of the scarf blanks, and some yarn because she wanted to do, there's those big, there's some big cowls that are, that have lacing holes that you would lace a scarf through, so she wanted the scarf and the yarn to match. So she was very excited that she got a scarf to do that with. Um, Anyway, I put hers in and I did it for a few minutes and then I flipped it over and did it for a few more minutes and then I took it out and noticed that the water dripping off of it was still purple. And I took it out side because it was in, a, in the, our friend's work, husband's workshop is where they had the good power source. And I was looking at it and I was wondering what was going on, why it didn't get quiet there was that and I realized it wasn't hot usually usually it's too hot to touch after that and I don't think I had or maybe I had one glove on and not the other but I could touch it and it was not even lukewarm so it's like why isn't this hot and so I put it in again and then the microwave started smelling funny so I turned it right off and that was the end of that. So we wrapped everybody's yarn up and I gave them directions and they all took it home to do themselves. I think you're not supposed to do the yarn in a food microwave, but I think, you know, months is okay. Um, you wouldn't want to do it regularly for any reason, but once is okay. And so that was dying day. I was sort of busy running around. There wasn't really a lot of table space. So I didn't dye anything this year. I might do something on my own if it ever clears up. It's kind of dark and rainy. Actually, it's just kind of dark out. The rain seems to have stopped for now. Um, so I have different lights on in the house, which I don't usually when I'm filming this and or taping. and. So we'll see what the color looks like when we're done. It could be weird. I could be looking really funny. Um, anyway, what else? Dying. Didn't die. Didn't do that. I have a list again. I know, I'm so proud of myself when I make a list. And I've done the f those. And I've talked about the April socks and the May socks. And I have a message. And... I don't care about that right now. Um, so that's it. So now it's sort of, I know I've, I thought I had it all sorted out so it would all flow nicely together and make sense without too much backtracking, but that's just apparently not how I do it. So 
what I'm going to show. So we've got the, the works in progress with the April socks and then the May socks. These. And then the other work in progress is a shawl. And if you've seen any of these before, you may have heard me say that I don't knit shawls anymore. And generally I don't, but I liked this one and it wasn't too fussy looking and I'm going to try. I'm going to try really hard to do it. Um, there's a couple of knit-alongs with it and this is the shawl. It's the raindrop shawl by Christina Wall and I like it and so I'm doing it I, I got I first came across it in the Wool Diaries podcast with Sally and she's having a knit along for it and Christina Wall is also having a knit along so and I might in my group too I'm thinking I will and have a skein of yarn as the prize at the end and I'm going to follow the Wool Diaries timeline. There's two timelines. They both started May 1st. Um, the pattern was on sale during August, August, April. It was $1.99 and now it's its regular price which I don't know what that is. I have I didn't look that up. Um, so anyway they both started May 1st. The Christina Walls ends on May 31st and her group is A Knitter's Life. She has a group, she also has a podcast. So I haven't watched that yet, so that's something I'm looking forward to. Um, so Christina Wall with A Knitter's Life, both her group and podcast are called that, and her designs are, are called that, have that in their name also. Um, and Sally from Wool Diaries, which is her podcast, and her group is also called Wool Diaries. And they have places, neither of them, I don't think, I know in Christina's you don't have to finish, it can be works in progress or finished objects. I think in Sally's it's the same way. What her, her take on it was is that if you knit two rows a day, you can do it in the two months. There's plenty of time. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've started it, and I don't know if this is going to show up at all. Um, I'll hold it up on this little notebook. Maybe that will help. Um, so I've started it. I'm going to pull back a bit. Um, and I did, I did this much last night. That's only 20 rows. I thought I'd do as much as I could to start and then go to the two rows a day so it doesn't drive me crazy. Um, but we'll see. I would like to get it finished because I like scarves and shawls and things like that. Um, and maybe I'll get some encouragement. So, or maybe I'll encourage myself. That would be good too. So anyway, that's what's going on with that. That's what's coming up in the future with the knit-alongs. Um, and I think that's everything on my list. Have I talked for very long? It doesn't seem like it's been very long. Um, I know the dogs have been good. I waited till the neighbors took theirs out to do anything. And let's see, what else is happening around here? There's not much. We got we got a solar system installed last week. So that's actually our big excitement. We're very excited about it. So it's installed. The electrical work is all done. It's been inspected. And now we just have to wait for the utility company to okay everything before we can turn it on. And it's pretty gray, so you know it wouldn't be doing a huge amount right now. Um, the day they installed if it was the panels or the, electric, the electrical part. Um, they turned it on for like 20 minutes and it made, we got quite a bit of power coming out of it for those 20 minutes. So 
So that's exciting. We're going to have solar. And it's not the kind of solar, it's not going to power our house or anything. It all goes back into the grid. Although my son says that the way it works is that whatever we don't use goes back into the grid, which I don't think is how it works. Anyway, it goes into the grid and then we get a reduction in our, our electricity bill depending on how much we use, how much we use compared to how much we produce. So, um, some friends who have, have solar say that their electric bills in the summer are about $15 a month. And then they go, they slowly get, get more during the fall and winter and until it's about the normal amount and then they start going down again as the, there's more light. So that's exciting to save a little money on solar, or on electricity rather. And what else is new? It's Robbie's birthday. Robbie the wild dog, the barky boy. Do I have a good picture of him? I don't know, I'd have to look and that would be kind of boring for everybody, but I will because I'm just that kind of mom. Figure cell phones, if you don't have grandchildren, they're for your puppies. So anyway, where's a good Robbie picture? Um, he's kind of a wild boy. Here's a close-up of his face. Um, there. And, let's see, the rest here are Jill. Well, here he is. Attacking Jill. They have a very love-hate relationship. Um, they like to fight. They don't really fight. They, it's more wrestling. They just do that and chew on each other. They're, they're just goofy. Robbie is especially goofy. Oh, here's a good one. We like this. I'm not going to play it. Oh, here, I'll turn the volume down. Play it. Um, my son found a video of Blue Healer puppies on TV, or on YouTube probably, and Robbie watches TV, so he was up barking at these poor puppies that were just running around being crazy. So that's our boy. He's at least as goofy as those little puppies. So, um, so anyway, he's two years old today, and that's very exciting. Because he's a sweetheart. As crazy as he is, he's a sweetheart. And here, there's a good picture of his face. That's him. He was just sitting on the chair, looking kind of mopey. He kind of looks mopey sometimes. He either looks really excited or kind of mopey. I don't think he was too mopey that day, but um, he did look it. So anyway, that's our boy. It's his birthday. I'll stop. Um, and we love him, even though we wish he would stop barking. I do. I really wish he would stop barking. So um, that, let's see, solar puppies. Um, That's about it. That's all my knitting. So I've got to, I'll have more to show you next time. I'll have a new pair of socks and probably another sock. Excuse me. And um, I'll have more done on the shawl. And that's all I'll have next time because that's all I'm going to be working on. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, you can find me on Ravelry. I, my, my name on Ravelry is B. Sarah. My group is Friends of Propanicus Moon. I think if you just look up Propanicus Moon, that's okay. On Instagram, I'm Propanicus underscore Moon. Um, where else can you find me? I have a website, propanicusmoon.com. The website, I've started updating a little bit, but it's still pretty pretty much on the lame side, so please be be patient with that. Um, 
and that's about it. You can email, if you want email, I'm sarah at propheticusmoon.com. And I'll, I'll put all these things up on the end. I'll write them out so you can see, because Propanicus is a weird name, I know. And I always forget to, say, to give these, these um, links here, anyway, to say them. So thank you. It's been fun doing this again. It's been a long time. I feel like it's very dark in here. Um, it is dark outside. It's not late at all. It's about 2 o'clock. And it should be pretty bright, but it's not. So hopefully this will work, and if not, I'll do it again. See you later. Have a good couple weeks. Bye-bye.